when we look at the anatomy of the nose, the upper third of the nose is made up of the nasal bones and is called the bony world. The middle third is the cartilaginous world and composed of upper lateral cartilages. The lower third is composed of lower lateral cartilages, namely letter crust and middle crust, and surrounding soft tissues, and it is known as the tip. Before rhinoplasty, a facial analysis is done and the nose is evaluated in relationship to the whole of the facial aesthetics. Then the surgeon discusses mainly the change in six parameters of the nose in addition to the many other details. Symmetry, width, profile, projection, rotation, and nasal length. Symmetry can be described as the axis of the nose should be on a line passing from the midline. When we look at the width, ideally, there should be two curvilinear lines passing on the dorsum of the nose called as brow tip aesthetic line. In profile, ideally, the dorsal profile should be straight in males, whereas it can be slightly curved in females. Tip projection is the distance of the tip from the face. It can be normal, over, or under projected. Tip rotation is the location of the tip on an imaginary arch touching the forehead, tip and chin. It can be normal, under or over rotated. The length of the nose is the distance from the root of the nose to its tip. The rhinoplasty can be done by endonasal or external approach. In the endonasal approach, all cuts are inside the nose. Endonasal incisions are done around the lower lateral cartilages. It can be intercartilaginous, transcartilaginous, or marginal. External approach is the combination of an inverted V-shaped cut placed on the columella and the marginal cuts that pass inside the nose. The septum, which is the midline partition of the nose, is made of the cartilaginous and bony portions and is covered by the lining called the mucosa. The septal mucosa is incised at the nasal entrance and it is separated from the cartilaginous and bony septum. Then the deviated cartilage and bone may be resected to get rid of nasal blockage. An L-shaped cartilaginous septum is left in place to prevent settling of the nose. Straight fragments of cartilage and bone may be reinserted. Often, the resected cartilage may be used during rhinoplasty as grafts. In both approaches, the lower lateral cartilages can be exposed for any modification. Tip exposure by endonasal approach. Each lower lateral cartilage is handled separately via each nostril. Tip exposure by external approach. The lateral crura, the domes, and the medial crura can be seen without any distortion as a single unit. The soft tissues over the cartilaginous and bony wall is separated. The bony hump can be removed by rasping and the cartilaginous hump can be resected as one piece by a scalpel. Another method is to remove the septal hump after dissecting and preserving the upper lateral cartilages. The third way of getting rid of bony cartilaginous hump is the use of dorsum preservation technique. The septal cartilage is resected from inside the nose, then osteotomies are done to push or let the hump down. In patients from Far East, there is a need for augmentation of the dorsum rather than reduction. In these cases, cartilage from nasal septum, ear and rib may be used. 
Some surgeons use alloplastic materials such as silicone or Gore-Tex. Augmentation by solid rib graft. Augmentation by dust cartilage in fascia. The bony hump can be removed by osteotome, rasp, electrical burrs or sews, piezo instruments, depending on the situation and the surgeon's preference. The tip of the nose seems aesthetically more pleasing after volume reduction of the lateral crura, mostly by cephalic trim and some cartilage sparing techniques such as lateral cruel turning flap technique. After removing the bony hump, osteotomies, which means cuts on the bones, should be done to close the open roof and narrow the bony permit in the majority of the cases. Osteotomies can be done by using osteotomes, sews, electrical sews, or piezo instruments. Osteotomies can be done from inside the nose and also externally as well. Endonasal osteotomy, external osteotomy. After removing the cartilaginous hump, middle wall can be left as it is. However, many surgeons prefer to use spare grafts or flaps to restore the middle wall aesthetically and functionally. Tip sutures are very popular in rhinoplasty. They are used to narrow the domal arch, give a shape to later cross, increase tip projection, change the rotation of the later crura. Domal suture, septicolmular suture, transdomal suture. Tip grafts are used to support or refine the tip. They are also used to increase tip projection. Call the other strut, Elder rim graft, tip graft, lateral cruel strut graft. At the end of the operation, a plaster and a cast is applied on the nose to stabilize and protect the nose during the initial recovery phase. If an extensive staple surgery is done, intranasal splints or packing can be used to prevent hematoma or nose bleeding.